this is session 4 on open shift training series managing container images what is the learning objective of this session by the end of the session you should be able to govern the life cycle of container image from creation to deletion we'll be creating a container image and a containerized application from scratch of course we will take inspiration from an existing project so this walkthrough is based on the project github.com docker labs tree master beginners flask app and this is based on that project but we are going to do it from scratch the inspiration is from this project and I like the project create a docker image which will run a flask app we'll try to do this by first pulling together the components of a for a random banner generator built with python flask then dockerizing it by writing a docker file from scratch finally we'll build the image and then run it so first is we'll create a python flask app that will display random banners then write docker file then build the image and then run the image for the purpose of the session we'll use a little python flask app that displays a random banner every time it is loaded so for this create a directory called flask app where we'll create the following files app.py requirements.txt and in templates under there's a directory called templates and under that we'll create index.html and a docker file let's create the requirement structure first make sure that uh, we should work on flask app before you start creating the files because you don't want to start adding the whole bunch of other random files uh, to your image which are there in your current directory so let's create the structure okay the so first is let's create the directory mkdir flask app cd flask app and we create the file here the directory called templates mkdir templates this is the tree we need no problem if the command is not found yum install tree because you will be needing it so that you understand what is the directory tree of my file now you can see the tree we have one directory templates and there's no file so we are going to create this app.py requirements.txt templates. Uh, under templates we are going to create index.html file and docker file in app.py we are going to put this code from flask import flask render template and import random and these are the images which I have on my website which I am going to uh, demonstrate using this app randomly let's put this code and create the file app.py so vi app.py under that I'm just putting the entire code which is there on the slide so from flask import render template then import random app flask underscore name then list of banners these banners are available if I open in a link I can show you these images are available I can show you all these images these are the images which I'm going to use in my uh, tab so these are the images which I'm going to uh, randomize and then app so this is our main file uh, that is the Python file after that uh, this is a screenshot of the file which I created then there's a the requirements dot txt file in order to install Python module required for our app we need to create a file called requirement dot txt and then we need to put a line in that file and that is for that file line is flask is equal to 1.0 that's the one version one we are going to create that okay let's use that so vi requirements dot txt and flask equal to one point 
1.0 version that's what we need flask version 1.0 so we just created this file next we are going to create index.html under your templates directory create a directory templates and create index.html file in the directory with the given content because this is a, a CSS file and the normal file which will call that Python file uh, to display to serve the images pulled by Python project so go to templates directory let's open that index.html create a new file and in this file we are going to put that CSS file uh, content and the HTML part of it this is HTML page normal HTML page this is CSS part of it size maximum width margin border padding text alignment and the div class is container and the IT course of the day and uh, this is the source served from the Python project presented to you by skillpedia.co uh, the skillpedia or simply put the skill p uh, simple uh, skillpedia so uh, for learners and trainers so this is the content which I want in my index.html go back to main directory and here we are going to create a docker file now docker file so this is index.html file now we need to write the docker file we want to create a docker image with this web application all user images are based on the base image since our application is written in python we will build our own python image based on the alpine which is a co bare minimum Linux operating system and we'll do that using the docker file so this is the docker file we'll uh, first create the docker file then I'll explore and explain each content of the docker file this is the content of our docker file I'm going to explain that in the presentation like from alpine version 3.5 install python and pip run apk add install python modules needed by python application copy requirement.txt in the container uh, directory user source app then inside the container run pip install no cache directory user sure app uh, user source app requirement.txt and copy the files required on the for the app to run copy app.py in the container based application and then copy index.html in the container then tell the port which port to be exposed port number 5000 and run the container so we are going to understand these commands so this is a docker file let's understand decoding the docker file we started by specifying our base image using from keyword like from alpine 3.5 the next step usually is to write the commands of copying the files and installing dependencies but first we install the python pip package to the alpine linux distribution this will not just install the pip package but any other dependencies too which include uh, the python interpreter so and this was done by the command python apk add update py dot uh, py hyphen pip that is version 2 of python and hyphen pip we installed that package the next we installed all python requirements for our app to run by adding the lines copy requirement.txt under user share user source app in the containerized build then run pip install no cache directory hyphen r that is the requirement r specified by this file which we copied we copied the files created earlier into the into our image by using copy command like copy app.py which we created user source app then copy templates index.html user share app templates and then we specify the port number which needs to be exposed port number 5000 where the application will be available the last step is the command for running the application which is simply python dot app dot py use the cmd command to do that and this is what we did command that is cmd python user source app app dot py the primary purpose of cmd is to tell the container which command it should run by default when it is started so it will start the app when you start the container this is the set of instructions in the docker file now we are ready to build the image the docker build command is quite simple it takes an optional tag name with hyphen t flag 
or hyphen hyphen tag and the location of the directory containing the docker file dot indicate the current directory so let's use that docker build hyphen t sang 170 open shift and let's build that container image with uh, this command so let's build that docker build hyphen t sang 170 sang 170 is actually my username on uh, github because i plan to push this on my github repository open shift 1.0 and dot means the current directory so it will build the image pulling that image installing the required packages with dependencies copying the requirements files you can see the each step as they are being executed and build is successful now we have built the application using this command we got the final message build successful now we are going to run the container docker run publish 8080 which is a port which will be available outside inside the container uh, it is 8080 outside it will be available on port number 5000 so internal port 5000 external port 8080 and we will be able to see the application on port number 8080 detach mode name banner sang 170 open shift 1.0 publish 8080 will map internal port 5000 with port number 8080 uh, on your local system and then you will be able to access the uh, this um, application at this and we can refresh it and every time we will try it will refresh the banners let's try this now so let's run the container docker run publish 8080 and now we can expose and we can verify so 10.0.0.4 colon 8080 and our application is running and every time you refresh you will see the course of the day every time you refresh it it will see different course every time you run it it will show you the different course so these are the different courses in fact uh, the banners are pulled from the website and they are running different courses they offer different courses in the blocks so I refresh every time so it will every time it will display a new banner so this application is running inside the container the interesting point is it is running inside the container and the port number 8080 is mapped to the internal port of the container which is uh, port number 5000 and so is brought to you by skillpedia.co so we saw this application we built application using a docker file open another terminal window and execute this command docker stop banner remove banner docker remove hyphen f banner so we are going to do that to stop that and uh, verify that docker container uh, which is running right now with the name banner is stopped and we remove it so another tab docker stop banner because banner is name of our project that you can see from here from the previous command I'll show you the name given name is banner so we are stopping that banner so banner stopped now to remove this image we can use rm command rm banner so banner is removed you need an account on docker hub if you want to share your image on docker hub docker login you specify the credentials use docker command line to login by using docker login and then create a tag for your image which should be pushed to docker hub the general syntax is docker tag image username and repository followed by the tag so docker login if you want to do that in my case you see docker login it's asked me the username and password login succeeded and then I can push the image so check the image ID and create an additional tag for your image which should be pushed to docker hub in my case I'll be using uh, the first using this open shift uh, the uh, image which I built so uh, docker tag image ID which you can see F2 F2 is this one the first one open shift tag sang 170 open shift colon banner and after I logged in I could see that uh, image list and I use this tag once the image is tagged for a particular repository you can push it to the corresponding repository now you can use the docker push command to actually push the image to docker hub and make it available publicly so that it can be used by anybody from anywhere so docker push sang 170 open shift banner this will push the image to 
the Docker Hub. I'm not going to post it because it's already available. I already have done it. These are the screen grab when I post it actually. Clean up. Once you are satisfied that your banner container work correctly, you can delete it. Uh, Docker RM, which I did in fact. This is the command I used to delete my banner. So Docker RM hyphen hyphen force force option stop the running container if so that it can be removed if the container is already running but if you have already stopped it and then you want to delete it you don't need hyphen hyphen force option if you stop the container running with docker stop uh, banner then you don't need to use this hyphen hyphen force to remove it that's all for this session thank you very much for watching bye bye take care i hope you enjoyed it thanks